Chapter 10, energy. Energy. So here is the table of contents for chapter 10. We're only doing the first three sections. Look at all that beautiful stuff we're skipping. This is actually a 3A textbook. Um, it's a really good textbook, but it's a 3A textbook. And we don't need to cover this stuff. Because if you're going to take 3A, you'll get it then. Do you use this textbook in 3A? No. No, they frown upon using the same book in different level courses. They don't like that. It does. But I will be using it for Chem 10 next spring, so you will be able to at least sell it back. Even though that is a huge ripoff, I know. So energy, the nature of energy. So we use the word energy perhaps a little differently in real life than we do in science. You know, this is an energy drink. Um, we talk about energy in all sorts of different ways. But we need to look at what do scientists mean by energy. Hi. You guys done? Okay. So energy is the ability to do work or produce heat. Another way to think of that is it is that which is needed to oppose natural attractions. So I don't want to drop that because it might break. So here is my pen. And if I drop my pen, there is a natural attraction that the force of gravity is pulling on my pen and causing it to fall. When I oppose that by lifting my pen up, I am doing work. I am opposing the force. Okay, another way to talk about work is um, applying a force through a distance. So when you push on something, like if I push on this bench and it doesn't move, I haven't done any work. But if I move this pen, I have done work. I've opposed a force through a distance. So work, you know, unfortunately I don't get paid for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, work is, is moving a force or applying a force through a distance. Heat, I think, you know, we kind of understand what heat is. Um, and so energy is, is related to those two concepts. Producing heat is energy or the ability to do work. And so we need to talk about the law of conservation of energy. Energy can be converted from one form to another, but it cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. So you can't create energy. You can only change it from one kind of, to another. The total energy content of the universe is constant. Okay, so all the energy that we have is all the energy that we will ever have, and it's the same as the energy that we had, you know, a million years ago, or whatever. Okay, energy is conserved. There are different kinds of energy. And two that are important in chemistry are potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy is energy due to position or composition. So when this pen is elevated above the bench top, it has positional energy, potential energy. Because if I let it go, it's going to fall. When it's here on the bench top, it has less energy. It has less potential energy, but it still has some potential energy because I could knock it off the desk and it'll fall to the floor. Yeah, waterfall, there's potential energy. The water at the top has the potential to fall down. The kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So up here when the, the pen is not moving, it has no kinetic energy. As it falls, it's moving faster and faster. Its kinetic energy is increasing. It's related to its velocity as its potential energy, its height off the desk, is decreasing. And so we're converting potential energy into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, energy of motion, it's, it depends on the mass of the object and on its velocity. And you think about this. You know, my boys play football, so a lot of things relate to football for me. 
So if you've got um, if you've got a linebacker and he walks up to you and bumps into you, so he's he's got a lot of mass, right? And so that's that's a fair amount of energy that he has bumping into you. But what if he's sprinting towards you? You're going to go flying, right? Because he has this mass moving at higher velocity and he has more energy. So then say you have Andrew, who weighs about 45 pounds, and he's running at you at the same speed as the linebacker. Is that going to hurt as much? No. I mean, he's pretty solid for a little kid, but he's no 250-pound, 300-pound linebacker running at you and knocking you over. If he, so velocity and mass. So high velocity, more kinetic energy. High mass, more kinetic energy. It helps when these things, when we can relate it to something in real life where we can see, oh, yeah, if it's got more mass, it's going to have more energy. Or if it's moving faster, you know, a baseball just wimpy tossed at you, hits you in the head, doesn't hurt much. Pitcher pitches it and hits you in the head 90 miles an hour. Ouch, right? Concussion. If, you, if it doesn't kill you. So, kinetic energy, energy of motion. And we can transfer things, we can, we can change energy back and forth. So let's look at a guy with balls on a hill. Boulders. Guy with boulders on a hill. <laughs> yeah. Boulder A, it says ball. Boulder A, he's holding it in place. This has potential energy. It has more potential energy than Boulder B, right? Because if this guy lets go of that, what's going to happen? It's going to roll down the hill. It has the potential to roll down the hill and do work. Because energy was the ability to do work, right? So if this rolls down the hill, it can do some work. This has less potential energy. After it has rolled down the hill, this guy's like, what happened? I don't know who draws these things. So boulder A rolled down the hill, and it hit boulder B. And what happened? It transferred its energy... So it had potential energy up here as it was rolling down. The potential energy was decreasing, but its kinetic energy was increasing. It came to the bottom, and it hit boulder B, and it transferred its energy to the other boulder, which caused it to roll up the hill. And there was this little, little flat place here, and it rolled up, and then it stopped because... It, it didn't go up as high as A was because there was also energy lost due to friction. As the ball rolls down the hill, there is friction and some of the energy is lost as heat as it rolls down the hill. So, like, if you've been driving and your, your tires are, are on the road, there's friction and they get warm. A lot of, a lot of things that are using energy and producing motion also generate a fair amount of heat. And that's not very useful energy anymore. But it, the, the total energy of the universe has stayed the same. But it, things have been moved from one kind of energy to another kind of energy. So heat involves transferring energy between objects and that transfer happens due to a temperature difference. And work is force acting over a distance. I mentioned that earlier. And so we introduced the, the concept of a state function. Energy is a state function. A state function is a property that does not depend in any way on the system's past or the future. It only depends on what's going on right now. And things that are not a state fun function depend on how did you get there. So energy does not depend on how you got to that point, but heat and work do. So let's look at an example of that. So distance traveled 
from one location to another? Is this a state function? Does it depend on how we went? It depends on how we went. Okay, so let's say, um, make sure I have a visible color here. So let's say here we are in Reedley and at Reedley College and we're gonna we're gonna go to Fresno City College which is over here in Fresno and so one way to get there would be let's, well, we could take Manning Avenue that's a really lame let's just use a different color it just didn't work at all we could take Manning Avenue, and I'm going to get all my directions weird, and then we're going to take 99, and then up 41, and go over there, roughly like that. Or we could grow wings and fly, and we could go as the crow flies, right? <coughs> or we could go down to Kingsburg, and then maybe out here to what's over there, Carruthers or something, and then come up this way. Why would we do that? Or you could head east and go all the way around the world and come back and get to Fresno. Is there a difference in distance based on your pathway? Yeah, there is. It varies a lot. So is distance a state function? No, because it depends on the pathway. So not a state function. A state function depends only on the state. And that's not the state of the United States or anything like that. How about changes in elevation? OK, so let's imagine now that that is the, a mountain. I'm making this up. It just, just kind of looks like a mountain. And, and here we are. Let's see, here we are down here. And we're going to go up to, say, Grant Grove. Does anybody know what the elevation is up there? It's not like <coughs> 6,000 or something, 6,000 feet? Let's just say we're going to go up to 6,000 feet. And down here in Reedley, we're about 300 feet. So we could get up there a variety of ways. You could go up 180 the normal way. What is your change in elevation if you do that? Well, it's the difference between 6,000 and 300, right? So the difference in elevation would be 5,700 feet. That would be the change in elevation. What if we took a helicopter and flew up really, really high and then came down and landed there? Would the change in elevation be the same? We started here and we ended up there. So let's let's put some things in here. So we took the helicopter and we went way up and we came over here and then we came back down. Or what color do we need? Um, purple. I haven't used purple. Or we took, you know, the road, got car sick, and ended up here. Is the change in elevation the same? The change in elevation is the same regardless of how you got there. Does that make sense? That's a state function. So change in elevation is a state function. Right. But it's only where you started and where you ended up, the difference in elevation. Regardless of how you got to Grant Grove, the difference in elevation between where you are at Grant Grove and where you were in Reedley is the same. The distance, say, let's do the distance thing to drive to Grant Grove. Well, if you went up 180, it would be one distance. 
and you know if you went way down to Visalia and came up through the mountains and through Whitaker Forest it would be a different distance even though you went from Reedley to Grant Grove does that make sense so I just want to go back to this slide real quick so energy is a state function it doesn't depend on how you got there, but work is not a state function. Work does depend on how you got there. And heat, transfer of energy, does depend on how you got there. Heat, heat and work are not state functions. Energy is a state function. Well, let's talk a little bit about temperature. 